Today we'll be covering how to make API calls from your Cloudflare worker. Cloudflare workers run on the server side, so your output will be server rendered, making your pages SEO friendly. And if you haven't been following along in the series, don't worry about it. I'll leave some directions in the description below on how to start from this point. I would recommend against using a library like Axios and instead use native fetch. The reason for this is Cloudflare workers have a one megabyte upper limit. Adding new libraries should be carefully considered due to this hard limit. And because Cloudflare workers run on the server side, you don't have to worry about things like browser incompatibilities with libraries. Test other clients you may be considering. Since workers do not run in a Node.js environment, some NPM modules will not work. But if a library also runs in a web browser, it should run in a Cloudflare worker. And ever since surpassing 1,000 subscribers, I no longer get notified when new people subscribe to the channel. So if you're new here, be sure to say hi in the comments below and I'll say hi back. I like to get started with the API. So what I'm going to do is inside of the source directory, I'm just going to create an api.js file. Now once in here, this is one of the first pieces of code that I paste into most of my APIs that use fetch. I like this pattern because it helps me avoid common pitfalls when using fetch. I have an entire video on this subject and you can watch that here if you want to know more. And this helps with making the APIs now. So all I have to do is say export cons and I'm going to say fetch all people and that doesn't take any arguments and I'm going to call my get JSON function and then just pass in the URL to swappy and my second method is going to be a fetch person method that will take an ID and it will still call get JSON but instead of using a string I'm just going to use a template literal and I'm going to pass the ID into that template literal and that's it for the API. So I'm just going to peek at the API here just to see what it returns. Um, looks like there is some light colors here so I'm just going to select the whole screen um, just so that I can actually read this thing. So here's the API that I'm going to be calling and I can see that it's going to return an object with um, the count, the, the next URL, uh, the results which look like they come inside of an array. So here's um, one person, the, the second, the third. It looks like it returns a, a couple of them. And I'm just going to keep this in mind when I'm designing the code. So let's start by creating the all people page. So I'm going to go into pages and then just type in allpeople.js. And I'll start by importing the fetch all people from the API. And I'll create the page function. I'm going to call it all people. So I'll say const all people. And I'm going to export that as default. So I'll say export default all people. And then in here I can say const and I'm going to get the results, which was the first property of the, of the JSON response coming back. And I'm going to have to await fetch all people. So let's mark this as an async function so that the await call will work. And the next piece I'm going to have to do is import my HTML response. So I have inside of lib already the responses and HTML response. And if you skipped ahead and you haven't seen the other videos, you can go back and see what HTML response is in the other videos. Also in the description below, you can link right to the source code. So now just to make sure that things are working, let's return our HTML response with a JSON stringified results. And to see the results, I just have to open up my index page and import my all people function. So I'm going to import from pages all people and I'm just going to go ahead and call that all people. Now here I can replace index with all people and I'm just going to put the people in and I'm going to allow a slash. This is actually a regular expression, so the question mark here says this slash is optional. Now just to see that we're on the right track, I'm going to open up the terminal and start the application. So I'm going to say npm run preview, and that should pop open a new window that I can navigate to that route by going to slash people. And I can see here that my array does come back with all of the people listed. And now I need to transform that JSON into HTML. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transform each individual result. So I'm gonna say const 
person to li. And what that's going to do is it's going to transform the, the data object of a person into uh, an HTML li element. And that's going to take the person, and I'm also going to need the index of that. And the way that this is going to work is I'm going to use another uh, template literal string, and I'm going to create an li here, as well as an anchor tag because I'm going to link to the person as well as here's going to be the ID. Um, in this case, it's going to be index. And the index, I'm going to add one because the index is going to start at zero because arrays are zero indexed. But in the API, each person comes back as, um, starts as one. So I'm just going to add one here and I'm going to close the anchor tag. And then in here, I'm going to take the person's name. Now, what this is going to allow me to do is just say const persons equals results.map because results is an array. I can map over the whole thing and I can just pass it the person's li. And then I can create the HTML by using an unordered list. Ul with the persons and because this is also an array i'm going to join them all together uh, into a string now that i have this i can take my html and replace the response and to confirm this works i've opened the browser again and i've navigated to slash people and now i can see my list of all the people that were returned from the api now that we know how to do this i'm going to create the person .js and follow the same pattern. So I'm going to copy these from all people. And I'm going to say const person equals, in this case, I'm going to take in the request. Um, and that's because I want to process the URL. So I want to have the URL to be uh, slash person slash ID. And to be able to process the ID off of that, I need the actual URL, which means that I need the request itself. And I'm going to export default person. And to get that URL, I'm going to first convert it to a URL object. So I'm going to say new URL, and I'm going to take the request.url from that. Now that I have this, I can say the path name equals URL.pathName. And I'm going to return an HTML response that will include the path name so that I can just load it up in a browser and see what that looks like. And before I can load it up in a browser, I have to add the route to my index file. So I'm going to copy the import here for person instead of all people. And then I'm going to turn this into person also. And I'm going to change the regular expression to uh, look for the ID on the end. Now that I have the browser up, I'm just going to navigate to people and then slash one. So if I look here, I can see that it's outputting slash people slash one. And that's because that's what the path name is here that we're outputting. So if I want to adjust the ID, I can say substring eight. And I'm going to change this to ID. And if I open up the browser again and look over here, I can see that it's now outputting one. Now it's probably better to use something other than a simple substring to get the parameters out of the URL. Uh, but just for this demo, I didn't want to import any packages or write any code that was too complicated. So for this demo, a simple substring will do. And now that I have the ID, the rest of this can be pretty easy. So instead of fetch all people, I'm going to just fetch an individual person. And this method has to be async, and then I can just capture the response as await fetch person, and this takes an ID. I'm also going to create an HTML, which right now, just for debugging, I'm going to stringify the response. Oops, looks like I spelled response wrong. There we go, and I'm going to output the HTML. And now if I navigate to slash people slash one, I can see that it's pulling in an object with the name Luke Skywalker. And just to pretty this up a little bit, I'm going to copy in a special function that I have, which is object to table. And what this function does is it 
loops through all of the entries in an object and it just creates a row for each one of those objects and then returns it as a table. And I just find this to be handy when I'm doing development stuff. So I'm going to import this up here. So I'm gonna say import and I'm gonna to go to lib slash object to table. And I'm just going to create a table right here with the object to table and I'm going to pass in the response. And then instead of returning the HTML as JSON, I'm gonna return the table. And I'll go ahead and just add a back button here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to output the table and then also a back button. And so now if I pop open the browser again, I can see my back buttons here. I can click that, go back. And then if I were to click something else, oops. Okay, I've spotted the problem. It looks like there's a person here and it should be people. So let's see if this is working. I'm gonna click on C3PO and back button and R2D2 and just one more Darth Vader. And the nice thing about Cloudflare workers is if I were to view the source, I can see that it actually outputs the HTML. So I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of this recording. I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. And just as a reminder, if you're subscribing, you have to click the bell icon, otherwise you won't receive notifications. You can also subscribe to my newsletter on joel.net and say hi to me on Twitter. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.